So welcome to the class today. We're going to look at adding rules. We practiced last week and we sang the song. If the signs are the same, you just state add and say. Add and say. You and the signs are the same, you just add and say. Okay. So that's the adding rule. If the signs are different, you gotta subtract. You gotta subtract. You gotta subtract. Now, if the signs are different, you gotta subtract. And keep the sign signs of the larger add. Right? So those are two adding rules that we've learned. We've kind of got those songs embedded in our heads, and it's driving us absolutely crazy. But we're gonna I'm gonna ask the question: hey, what if you saw this? What if you saw this as an example? These two things aren't being added, are they? Are they? In elementary school, your teachers taught you no, they were being subtracted. But in here in high school, I'm telling you, those are two numbers being added. Yeah. Because what I want you to understand here is that subtracting is added. And so really all we need is the adding rules that we practiced last week. Because 7 minus 4, you have learned in previous classes, or you should have learned in this class, or you're learning now. 7 minus 4 is the same as 7 plus negative 4. Subtracting is the same thing as adding. You just add opposites. This says minus positive 4. What's the opposite of positive 4? Negative. So adding the opposite is the same as subtracting. Subtracting is adding. So the only thing I have to have you practice, now you were given a sheet last week that had a front and back printing on it. 2.2 and 2.3, I think. And 2.2 was due last week. Okay. So on the back side, if, I, if you turned it in, I'm giving it back to you in a minute. On the back side is 2.3. I want you to practice the adding of those things. Okay? So using this, if you see 7 minus 4, that's the same thing as 7 plus negative 4. Now, are the signs the same or different? <laughs> different. So you got to and keep the sign of the larger x. Right? So the answer is uh, uh, 3. <laughs> positive 3, because you're keeping the sign of that larger 7, positive 7. Right? So you're going to use the same rules we practiced last week. We're just going to have to have this one more step. When you see subtraction problems, don't freak out knowing you can usually still use the same adding rule, just add opposites. You feeling me on that? Second lesson for the day is adding fractions. So Bree's going to keep come keep on me. When I write things on the board, she's going to focus in. You're going to be able to see this video anytime you wish to review this lesson. So adding, I'm sorry, yeah, adding fractions. Who likes fractions? Not me. Good. Which I'm not, I like that you're not lying to me. Oh, you like fractions? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Sorry. We don't, we, nobody hardly likes fractions. I mean, it's one of the math F words, right? Ugh. Yes, we don't. But especially adding and subtracting fractions. So what I'm going to do is try to give you a, you guys did so well with that pattern recognition last week. I'm going to give you another opportunity to see patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write correct equations up here. I'm going to write three of them. And I want you to recognize a pattern and try to write your rule for adding. This answer is that. The answer of adding these is this. The answer of this is correctly written that way. I hope I didn't make a huge mistake. I don't think I did. But you look at those three, trust me, put your hand on the radio and believe me, trust that they're correct. If they're correct, can anyone see a pattern? Raise your hand. That's what you say. So, like, for the bottom number of the fraction, we just multiply. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait. Did anybody hear that? Whoa. Did you hear what she said? So let's repeat that. Multiply. To do what? Uh, to get the bottom number. Now that's her word. So she can write that down in her notes. And then like for the that, that wait, there's wait, okay, let's get somebody else. That bottom number. To get the bottom number. So you can write over here, here's the rule. You can use her words, use your words, whatever you wish. 
To get this bottom number, you multiply the bottoms. By the bottom numbers. Now, in elementary school, you, you learned that to be a denominator, right? Use your words. Use your words and your rules so that you are most comfortable with it and can remember it. Does that make sense? So to get the bottom number of each of those answers, if you're trusting their truth, she says, does that work in every pattern? To multiply, does it work? Two times three, three times four, five times two. Did it work? Okay. So if you had another problem, what would the bottom number be using the rule? Eight. Oh. That's simpler, right? Okay. okay. If you can trust that to be true. Now, who sees a pattern in the top number? Oh. And how to get the top number to answer? Oh, three. You add the bottom numbers. Ooh, if you add them. Does everybody see that pattern? <coughs> oh, this oh, is five. Yeah. Well, three. that's two. And this is seven. And that is seven. Okay. So if you were trusting that to be true, and trusting those to be right, then you would write the top rule. The rule to get the top number would be what? Add what? Add the tops. Add the denominators or add the bottom numbers. Use your language. Write it down in your notes. To get the top number, you would add the bottom numbers, denominators, whatever you want to phrase it. Write in your words so you remember it. It becomes part of you. Okay? Now, if it is a rule, I think we can be trust in a math class, then it has to work for every possible situation, right? Otherwise, we can't trust it. It's just not a rule. We can't, we can't follow it, right? It's got to work for everything. So, if this is a rule, well, then what would the numerator be for this particular problem? Right? And, and maybe the answers will reduce, okay? Because that's what Mrs. Wilson taught you in third grade, right? I mean, Mrs. Wilson also taught you this. I had fractions in third grade, right? What I'm trying to do for you today is you will never, ever, 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 even when you get to my algebra functions and graphs class, and I teach you how to add polynomial rational expressions, you use the same rule. Which you're just now recognizing. So, if this works, if this is true, then do this problem. What's the answer? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? What's the answer? Can you, do you even have to write it down? I mean, you can do it in your head now, right? Because you got your rule. What do you, how do you get the bottom number? Uh, head. Uh, or no bottom number. Uh, 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 and what is it? Uh, oh, okay, and how do you get the top number, Kyle? Uh, you, and what is it? Okay, so there's your answer, right? That answer is seven twelfths. Does anybody have a problem with that? Wait a minute. Over here I have one third plus one fourth is seven twelfths. Here I have two thirds a cup of sugar and one fourth, and I get the same answer. You should have a problem with that, right? Right? What? No. You cross multiply. Yeah. So in this in this case, the reason the rule that you wrote here, which was good, based on these few examples that you have, what pattern do these examples have? They are all, the all the numerators are what? One. One. You see that? If all the numerators of every fraction is one, then the rule you just wrote would work every time. But in the world, real world, we don't have just one as a top number, do we? Okay. So what? has been offered to you, and I'm sure, I'm pretty confident that Miss Mondragon showed you this, possibly, if you had her in the spring. Um, but let's try to write a rule. So what I'm going to do is make three more fractions, and let's save your observation and let others maybe see it. Okay. Hold your mouth, hold your tongue just a little bit, and sharing what you, because you're right. I'm going to give you three more correct answers, where the problems start out without the numerators one. So let's do... Um, that's a correct answer for that problem. Here's another. That's a correct answer for that problem.
That's a correct problem. Or a correct answer. For that problem. Let me double check. And it's kind of and I think we're okay. And I think we're okay. Does somebody see a pattern? Again, we want a rule. How do you get the bottom number? How do you get the top number? Great. To get bottom, the bo bottom number. The bottom number, you multiply the two bottom numbers. Oh, same rule. Multiply the same rule, right? So we don't have to change that. But what about that top number? So top number is giving us a problem, right? Anybody see? Okay, let me get some of this. Thank you. Cross, cross, cross multiply each of the fractions and then add them. Okay, what do you mean by cross multiply each like of the fractions? Like five at the bottom one, five times two, and then four times one, and then add them. Five times two. Five times two. Oh. Three times two. Right? Did you ever see her example? Okay? So she said, hey, take these numbers. Then you get 10. If I multiply 3 times 2, what do you get? 6. six. And 4 times 1? 5. Four. And then four. that 6 oh. plus 4 got the 10, right? Does that work for every one of these problems? Trusting that these are correct, that Stevenson didn't make a human mistake. 5. Say it. Six. 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 Five and six add two. Eleven. Six. Eight. Eight. Oh. Eight. Three. Okay. So how would you write that down? Write it in your own words. Cross, multiply, and add. Whatever your rule is that you've written down, write it in your own words. Brilliant. Pastor. Nice observation. That is something you may have seen before. I want to make sure that you had seen that, we call it the bow tie. I think Ms. Mondegon actually called it that. Uh, over here at Ranch when we were working together. The bow tie method. The reason we call it bow tie is because we cross multiplying. You can kind of, kind of draw a bow tie. It looks more like a windmill. What? Yeah, a windmill. Windmill. Whatever. Funny cue words that you have to help you remember something. Whatever, whatever comes up in your head, you name it that. Okay? So, if that works now, so you can add fractions in a New York second now, where you may have struggled with the find the common denominator, change both fractions, and all those steps. Now you might be able to use Whatever the fractions are, and you're asked to add them, what's the bottom number? Bottom number is easiest, right? What's the bottom number? Again, you have to be able to multiply numbers oh, yeah. you know, six to seven, relatively quick way. What? 42. And if you need to, because the numbers get bigger in your head, just write them down that way, that way you don't make a mistake. 40 what? 41. Just that quick now you can multiply fractions, okay? So I wanted to share that with you because on that worksheet that you're going to finish up today, three point, or 2.3, you, I think you have some fractions. And I even think you had some fractions on 2.2 and I didn't show you this, okay? So this is called bow tie or windmill or another, your observations of writing your own rule for adding fractions. Any questions? We are. The Ask Academy. Thank you, Brianna. Over and out.